Right, so here are some of the stuff I inked on Primos. We'll save this video for another time. But what I'm doing right now is I'm just looking for a page that um, looks kind of like where I can use the back to do an uh, art demonstration because I want to do some inking on uh, on a board and I didn't want to get a new, new Bristol board. So I'm just going to use the original art on the back of uh, one of these boards. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter which one. I'm just going to use the back of this one. So right here. I'm just gonna use the back. So one of my uh, patreons, um, her name is uh, Paola. Um, she's from um, Mod Modena, Italy. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, she asked some questions, and then let me sh before I begin, I'm gonna show you some of her artwork. I've actually scratched some of those areas off because I didn't want YouTube to um, like take down my video. So apologies for uh, scratching some of those off. So this is some of. Um, Paolo's work, she draws, she pencils her own work, and she wants to know how she can approach uh, inking it. Because uh, well, let's take a look at some. Of, so these are these these are her pencils. I'm going to zoom in. So a lot of fine lines over here. Okay, a lot of curved lines. But she didn't know how to approach inking it. Uh, here's here's another piece of her work. Very 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 nice work. Okay, that's uh, some some characters and some nice contour lines. Here's some more. And the, the way she draws faces, it's, it's, it's really amazing. She's also a sculptor. Again, uh, Paula, um, right over here. And let's take a look at another one. So she did a few more penciling. And then look at those faces. These are really nice looking faces that she draws. And then she found me on social media and found my Patreon page. And then she joined one of my tiers and wanted to know how she can go about uh, inking uh, some of her work. So I'm going to... Take this piece of paper and I'm going to demonstrate how I would go about um, inking some of this work. And then she also has some questions. Um, she, she looked at Bern Hogarth's work and this is somewhat of the style that she's looking for. But when I look at Bern Hogarth, this, this looks more like a, a stippling effect. So we don't want to do that uh, based on what... Um, what her style is. She also looked at Gary Martin's book where there's a, like a lot of cross hatching that creates a gradation. And that's not really what uh, pa Paula wants. Like um, her, her effect is more like a single line. Uh, at most, maybe a double cross hatch line to give it a, more of a, like a fade. So I'm gonna use a pencil and just kind of draw in some of uh, those uh, techniques uh, that she's drawn. Um, I don't know if she's, yeah, all these are just pencil marks. So for example, if I'm just going to draw like a body, uh, let me just move this one back. Uh, let's look at some of her uh, lines. Okay, so if I'm going to draw maybe some, like, a body part that's like this. Okay, and we'll just do a few curves like that. Okay, we're just going to draw a little bit darker. Okay. And then I'm going to do what uh, Paul, Paula already penciled. So what he did, what she did was uh, she would draw lines that just goes like this. Okay. And I'll have that come back. And what she's doing over here is a lot of detail work. I'm just going to go here and draw a few lines just following it. I'm just actually going to go and indicate where so I don't have to draw everything. I, I could just ink. I could just ink uh, where I'm going to be drawing it so I know what I'm going to look. But for for some of the audience sakes, uh, I'm just going to zoom in closer. So there's a lot of fine pencil lines like this. Okay. So what I, how I'm going to approach this is I'm going to use a brush. So the brush I usually use, uh, where is my brush? I'll use the Pentel Aguash brush, uh, this one. Uh, this brush is actually made by Pentel. Uh, it's for watercolors or um, calligraphy painting. I have actually bought this in Japantown in San Francisco, uh, right across from Kino Kinoya Bookstore. There's a stationery store. They sell these for like maybe US dollars, maybe five, between five to nine dollars. And these brushes, what you're supposed to do is fill it with water. You fill the barrel with water and then you... Uh, tighten it back up and then when you squeeze it uh, water will come out and then if you're painting with watercolor pencils you, your watercolor pencils when you're drawing with uh, watercolor pencils it's like lead and then once you're done you squeeze the water out and then that becomes like a more of a watercolor uh, some artists they'll just put ink in there and then they'll, they'll use that to write a uh, uh, 
Japanese or Chinese calligraphy. Uh, so it's more fluid. They just squeeze it and more ink come out. But I, I don't actually fill this with uh, ink or anything. I just use it. And then I'll take my bottle of ink. And the bottle of ink I'm using is a Speedball. So this is a Speedball Super Black right over here. This is the brand I use. I'm also one of the uh, brand ambassadors for Speedball. Uh, if you go through the website, uh, speedball and then look at one of their uh look look up some of the professional artists i'm one of the artists that uh they were um that helps them represent their brand uh speedball speedball okay um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go in here and kind of show you how i would approach these lines so before i start inking this area what i'm going to do is ink in lines that are bigger so you can see what my hands are doing what how i'm approaching doing this so to practice it's better to practice make sure the tip of your brush is nice and sharp first so right now it's very sharp this this brush i'm using is a size size small there's a small medium large uh small as in sharper tip medium thicker and then large is a um like a really thicker brush so i, I just use the uh, small one so i would kind of before you start inking kind of practice inking a few lines consistent lines first to see how the brush works for you okay so i'm able to do this by going holding the brush really lightly just gliding it across the paper okay i'm gonna go in a little bit closer let me zoom in a little bit okay and if you press down on the brush you're gonna get a thicker line okay depending on how thick you want your lines to be you want your lines to be consistent throughout all of this so i'm gonna get some more ink okay the more ink you dip in there but then don't put too much ink you don't want too much ink uh get a uh, scratch piece, piece of paper and test it first and then once you start inking just remember these contour shapes of of, um, of these areas so what i like to do you can either push into the black go from thin to thick let me get it start again you can go from thin to thick this is what i like to do or you can go thick to thin whichever you're more comfortable with okay uh, it's all about controlling your brush how when to pull up and when to push down so some of the areas that paula had penciled in let me show uh, you uh, her work again okay so some of these when i when i'm doing inking i'll see like a little a darker line on the side so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go with a brush and i'm going to start inking that line first okay just go go about and just ink that line as smooth as you can and then I'll ink uh, both sides, like one on this side. Okay, my brush is already drying up. I'm going to clean my brush. I'm going to dip, I mean, I'm going to dip my, kind of swoosh my brush in water just to get all the dry areas, uh, not, not dr like wet. And then just dry it off a little bit. And then I'll dip the brush again to make sure it's fluid. Because when I was inking earlier, the brush was kind of cracking up. So you wanted that to be fluid. So now, now it's more fluid. So I'll go back in there. And then I'll ink that line. And I'll ink that line. And I'll try to make these lines as smooth as some of these lines that, you, that you're penciling in. So I would just go in there and just go black. Just go all black. Because you want those lines to taper off on that side. So right over here, we're just going to go and ink this part. And then this part. Now, before you start inking uh, all the other areas, you want to make sure this is dry. Okay. Uh, when you're using a brush, it holds a lot of ink, especially if you're using a quill quill. It holds a lot of ink, and if it's not dry and you and you ink over it, there's a good chance that your hand can smudge. You don't want to smudge. You want to make sure areas are dry so you don't smudge. So the way I check to see if an area is dry is I'll hold it at an angle. You see, when you're holding an angle, you see a sheen. You see that sheen over there? See that? When you see a sheen on the inks, that means it's still kind of wet. So you want to go in there and kind of dry it off. I'm going to help it dry off a little bit because I want to do this demonstration quicker. I just get a towel and I just press down a little bit on it just to remove some of the excess inks. There. And then now I'm going to go in here, make sure it's completely dry. Now, now that it's dried, I'm going to turn my 
turn this and then I'm going to contour these lines. So you'll see that I already indicated the curves. So I'll go in there and then I'll just slowly taper in the lines one at a time. Okay. Like that and then as i'm tapering those lines wh what i'm doing is i'm pushing thicker as i go towards the black area see that and i'll go really really so for this part i'll take my time and i'll space them evenly not only am i spacing them evenly i'm making sure that there's they're ending those little tips at where the black area ends now if i want those lines to be longer i'll slowly Go and make it longer, and I'll ease up on the uh, the brush inking. Okay, so I don't press too hard. Okay, uh, the key to this with inking taper lines is to be as um, spaced evenly, as nicely as you can. I'm gonna go up here and kind of go even closer. So right here, I'll go lighter hand and very lightly control your your part of inking. This isn't just to ink a line is to control how much pressure you're putting down and how little pressure uh, you're easing up, okay? Um, you have to control your distance, your arc, your curve, and then you have to control how hard to press down and how lightly. Okay, once you have that done, you're gonna turn it around. Now, I'm gonna explain why I turn this around, okay? My hand, my hand here, I, it pivots like a compass. When you pivot a line and you're inking in the line, like this for this line, for example, you can get a much, much smoother line. Now, if I was to ink a line that goes this direction, this takes a little bit more work. The reason for that is because I'm moving my wrist and I'm moving my finger, okay? This takes two joints to move. Here, you're just using your wrist and you're locking your wrist and you don't move your finger or your elbow. And then when you ink that line, you're gonna get a smoother line. Okay, now want to do that over here. Now, just say, hey, Walden, how about when you're doing like shorter lines? Well, with shorter lines, I don't move my wrist. I don't move my elbow. I only use my fingers and I do that smaller mo motion. So I'm going to go back in closer and then right over here, I'm going to angle this a little bit. Okay, so I'll, I'll make sure my brush works first with a scratch piece of paper and then I'll slowly ink in that line very thin and then push into it. Okay, now sometimes you're gonna get some of these coming out, that's okay, we can just go back in there and kind of thicken up that dark line. So we're gonna go very thin, take your time. Okay, just breathe and take your time and then just ink those lines. Contour them, you don't want them to be straight. Uh, the more you contour the curves of the body, the better, the more uh, depth something will look. If you're going straight, it's just going to look flat. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to extend these out and kind of close them up over here. So I'm going to go here. You'll notice that right on the top, there's a lot of uh, white spaces. I don't need to worry about that. I'm only focusing on the taper lines, the black lines, and then how it closes up in the center. And then later on, once I have all those done, I'll go back and I'll touch it up a little bit. This is what I usually do when I'm making a comic book work. I'll just focus on that and not worry about what I've done above, and I'll go back like so. Now, after I have that done, I'll just go back and I'll just clean it up a little bit. I'll just go back here, go here, and you just darken up that. So now you have a nice, fine curve. I'm gonna do that a, few, a couple more times. We're gonna add some on this side. Let's say this side, um, the light source is coming from here, and I don't want that much shadow here because I don't want that much to be thick. So I'm turning it, I'm moving my hand, towards that direction and then here I'm, I'm gonna press down I'm more comfortable pressing into the black uh, if you feel that you you can go from uh, from thick to thin that's okay it's whatever you're comfortable with I always ink uh, how your hands are gonna be able to move. just because Walden is inking thin to thick doesn't mean that you have to ink thin to thick you can ink uh, thick to thin uh, if I'm inking with a quill I would actually go um, uh, the same direction. You can flick it or you can uh, lightly press down just like what I'm doing here. So very slowly, take your time, look at where it starts and just press down. Look at where it starts and then press down. Like right now, I can tell that my inks are kind of like running out because the ink is kind of like turning grayish a little bit. Now when it's gray, I'll just get my bottle of ink and then I'll dip my brush in there. Now, when you dip brush, don't dip on top of your artwork. I'm only dipping on top of the video so you guys can see 
what I'm doing. But for you guys, uh, always ink like always dip your ink uh, on somewhere else. Okay, so this is how I approach using a brush. I'll just take my time. And if lines doesn't close up, just go back and kind of like close them up. And then enjoy the process. Enjoy the process. Your, your goal of inking this is to enjoy each line that you put down. Don't worry about how long it's going to take you to finish it. Just go in there and then just take your time making each one as nice as you can. Because what's most important is the quality of your art than your quantity. I'm going to go in here and make these a little bit longer. So right over here, we're going to contour this way. Make sure, again, check to make sure that it's dry. Look in the angle. See, you see that sheen? That means it's still wet there. So because it's wet, I'm going to go... Uh, Make sure my hand doesn't touch any of the white areas. I want to make these a little, little bit more of a longer arc. So we're going to start very thin again. Test the paper. Make sure it works. Go from very thin. Make sure your hand can make that movement first. I call that a ghost line. And then slowly ink that line in. This time I'm going to go a little bit longer. Okay, and then later, later on, I'm going to go and show you how I will cross-hatch this pattern. Uh, when I cross-hatch, uh, actually, I'll, I'll talk about it once I get towards there. I'll cross-hatch some of these. So when I when I know that I'm going to cross-hatch, I'm not going to close up these lines over here. Like, if you see them, uh, you see that there's a blunt there. I'm not going to close up those lines. In fact, when I cross-hatch them, it will close it up for me. Okay, I'm going to ink these lines. Now, if I wanted this area to be a little bit darker, I just tilt the paper a little bit and do the same motion. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to cross hatch this. Now, when you cross hatch them, you want your distance to be spaced evenly. Now, when I'm inking these, you notice that I'm creating this diamond shape pattern uh, in inside the uh, taper lines. It's almost like these little diamond shapes. They're similar to one another. The more similar you can get these diamond shapes to look this, the same, the nicer your gray tones will be. Okay, now let's just say that, okay, uh, well, I don't really have a brush, okay? I want to try inking this with a quill quill. Um, how do I approach inking this with a quill? Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how I approach inking this with a quill. I'm going to put this away. And then now when I ink with a quill, let's just grab um, one of these quills. So here's, here's a quill I have. Okay, this is a quill. Uh, some artists, they know how to use quills. Some artists, they don't know how to use... Some artists, they don't know how to use a brush. I'm going to demonstrate how we'll go about uh, inking both of these. I'm going to find one that's really sharp. Uh, right next to me, usually I'll have um, a, a few quills. Actually, I have... like I actually have a lot of quills. Each one has a different thickness. Uh, and then I'll rotate uh, from them. Okay? So I'm just going to put some of these away. And then right now, the sharpest one I have is is this one. Now, when I use a quill, I actually use another brand of ink. I find the uh, Speedball works better with the brush. With a quill, I actually use a, a Higgins Black Magic right over here. I'll add links below the video description, so if you want to order some of that, you can order it. Now, with the Higgins uh, brush, with the Higgins Black Magic, I actually take the dropper, it comes with a dropper, and then I'll feed it, just like what I'm doing over here. I just add ink over here. I'm going to make Make sure I grab some more ink, okay, and then and then I'll feed it like like so, okay. Kind of clogged over here. Okay, I would squeeze it until there's a drop that comes out, and then there we go, okay. And on the paper, I'll test it for a little bit, make sure it works. If not, I'll squeeze a little bit more ink, like so. I'll test it, okay. Once once that ink works, okay, let me pop all those bubbles. There you go. I'll feed it. There we go. Okay, so there's some of the inks. So the same thing, there's two ways of using a quill. You can either flick it, like that, or you can push into it, okay? You can push into it. I'm gonna demonstrate how I push into it, okay? Because because I, I find that for myself, there's more control. So I'll, I'll start off, I'll contour, I'll go thin, and then I'll push into it. See that? So slowly, just one at a time, space them evenly, Regardless if you're using a quill or if you're using a brush, it's the same way of doing the work. Um, your different tools can create the same effect, but it's a different way of holding it. So let's see that. Okay, there's a little bit more angular. I'm going to go in here and add some more. So I'm going to go make uh, longer lines with the quill. I'll start thin. I'll push in. 
I'll start thin, push in, and take my time. And all I'm doing is focusing on each one. Now, if I want those lines to be a little bit smoother, I just go in and go move a little bit quicker. Okay, but when you go a little bit quicker, you have to make sure what you're drawing, what you're inking is in the right place. So there's that line. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna cross hatch. Okay, so the same way, you can either flick out of it, flick out or flick out and turn or go into it. This time I'm gonna flick out with the, with the quill. So right over here, flick, flick. So it's whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, so that, this is how I would go about inking with a micron, uh, with a quill quill. Uh, next, I'm going to demonstrate how to do the same effect with a micron or some, some of you who has a micron. I actually like the brush uh, a little bit better because it, it's a nicer uh, flow. And then every time you're done uh, using the brush, make sure you wipe it dry. Uh, don't use don't use water. If you use water, uh, you'll find that your quill will uh, start rusting right away. So I'm going to put this away. Now, with a micron, I'm just going to grab a number what is this? This is a style of Micron. Again, uh, look underneath the video description for a link to where you can order all these. Or just click the link and then you can see uh, what they are. So if I'm going to use the Micron here, same effect. You can either go out, out of it, one at a time, space them evenly. Make sure the length of these is, is the right length. You What you don't want is some lines longer, some lines shorter. You want them to be spaced evenly and you want them to end in the right place. Okay, so I'm actually going from inside to outside. You can always go back and then cross hatch it. I'm going to cross hatch going into it. Just take your time, and all you're focusing on is where to start that line and how far apart they are. Okay, we want to go around this way. I'm going to push in, contour it, take your time, concentrate on where the line starts. The line's gonna go to the black area, so you don't really need to concentrate that much on it. And then focus on the distance of each one. Okay, now if I wanna cross hatch, I'm just gonna go here and cross hatch, I'll press down into it. Again, focus on where the line starts. I'm gonna have it come out a little bit more to give it more of a gradation. And then space them evenly. And then now I'm gonna go back in there to give it a little bit less, okay. There you have it. So that's how I would ink uh, some of these lines. Um, or you can even use a micron and then just go all the way across. Like, go all the way across, arch it like this. Take your time, space them evenly as best as you can. And then once you have that, just go back in and cross hatch this way. Cross hatch one time, turn it around this way, and then cross hatch this way. Okay, so those are a few. You can even go back and kind of like do three times cross hatching to make that more of a softer tone here. So I'm going to do that and show you just three times on the side with a micron. Come back on this side and do three times like here. Okay, so that those are a few ways. I I actually like uh, using a brush. Um, the brush uh, there's it's the lines are softer. I feel. Yeah, so I'm going to use a brush and make uh, longer lines. So we can see how it looks. So we're gonna start um, from 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 the left all the way across. I'm gonna go thick, thin, thick, thick, thin, thick. So this takes a little bit more skill, but with practice you'll get there. Okay, we're just gonna go in here, start thick, go thin, thick. And once you get towards the black area, just ease up and press down. Okay, turn it where to until your hand is like uh, like comfortable. And you just take your time, controlling the pressure. And then once you have that, just go back in there and taper into the line. So you can get that uh, gradation right over here. And then we want to go from here to here. Okay, there we go. And that's how I would uh, ink some of those lines. So some of the pencils that you've done, Paula, Paula, uh, right over here. That's how I approach uh, inking some of uh, these these areas like that okay now you also had a, a, some other questions on how to create certain textures so i'm going to zoom back out 
just so we can see what, what your questions and I can help you. Um, so you looked at my website and then there was some uh, areas that you want to do some inking and I'm going to demonstrate how I do that. So we're going to fast forward to right over here. Uh, let's do this one last. All right, we're going to do all the easiest one first. Okay, uh, let's start with this one. So this is one piece that I inked over Philip Tan. Uh, this is... Um, like, um, she was interested in how I did all these this background hatching. I think I'm the only uh, comic book artist out there that knows how to do it this way. And then the other way is uh, this taper has hatching. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pencil. And I'm just going to draw a few of these burst lines. Now, you notice that this is kind of a round line. So we're going to go in here and I'm just going to draw maybe a round circle. I'm going to grab another scratch paper. Um, not a scratch paper, but the back. Because... Some of this is still wet. I don't want to be smudging it. Okay, I want to take a use the back of this artwork. Uh, so if you haven't seen this is this is uh, for a title called Primos for AWA Comics. Uh, the pencil was a uh, Carlo Barberis where I did some inking over him. I don't I don't think I got credit for that issue uh, for issue three, but the trade paperback is out. Issue three is out, so this is some of the work. So I'm gonna take a pencil. I'm gonna draw some of these lines. So I'm just gonna quickly draw some of those lines like this going towards the center. And then now I'm gonna demonstrate how I go about uh, inking these lines. Uh, they, these lines are a little bit more tricky and I'm gonna show you how I do that. So I'm gonna zoom in. Okay, you can see the pencils right there. Okay, so the, what I usually do is I'll, I'll zoom out and zoom in so you can see how my hand movements and how what I'm doing with my left hand and right hand. First thing I'm gonna do is get some ink Dip your ink, make sure you have enough because nothing worse than inking. All of a sudden, your ink turns gray and then you, you, you're going to have to go back and re-ink some of the areas. Okay, and then I'll start inking thin lines and I'll press into it. So the first thing I do is I'll press lines like that. See that? I'll slowly just press into it. And again, just like uh, inking the legs earlier, I, I, folk, I concentrate on the distance. And then as I go towards the black area, I'm, I'm turning with my left hand. I'm slightly turning the Bristol board. So I'm gonna go here, focus on where it starts, press down really hard with the brush. Just let that brush go where it may. Turn, it, turn your artwork with your left hand. Focus on where it starts, turn it. Focus on where it starts. Say uh, there's a blast, like on, on this description, there's like these white lines. So with the white lines, I'm just gonna ink some lines that goes further out. So right here, we're gonna do a few more, like this. Now ink that one long line, and then a few shorter lines. Okay, and then right here, a few short lines. And now close them up. After I close them up, I continue turning it with my left hand, and now I'm going to start pressing the lines into it. Again, focus on where you start the line. Don't worry too much about where it ends. Okay. Space them. And they, sometimes if you have it too big, just go back and kind of uh, make it a little bit smaller. You can always go back with a brush. And then I'm going to make some of this. Then I'm going to zoom in closer so you guys can see a little bit better uh, the, the technique I'm doing. With my left hand, I'm turning the bristle board and I'm just focused on, in on the line. Okay, sometimes you can turn your brush until it gets into the right angle. Turn it again. Turn it and just keep inking those lines like this. Just hold it lightly. Imagine you're flying an airplane. You're landing that, you're landing that brush very softly. So when you ink, don't, don't ink like this and then draw lines. I've seen so many inkers that will just push the brush into here and then ink. Always ink the brush like you're landing an airplane very softly. So you're inking in the air and you're gliding onto the paper and you're pressing down. Okay, you can practice some of those lines where you're going like this and then close them up or you can practice lines where you're going thicker and then thinner. Thin, thick, thin, thin, thick, thin, thin, thin thick, thin. Uh, you can also practice um, lines where you go thick Thin, thick, thick, thin, thick. And then all these areas are black. So we're gonna continue uh, doing some more of this. Okay, just press down into it. Okay, this one doesn't look that good. So just go back and add a little bit more. And then I'm gonna add a longer line. 
And then here are some uh, explosions right over here. And you just press into it. Slowly press into it. Now, you, I'll, I'll notice that the ink is kind of like starting to turn a little bit grayish. That means the brush is out of ink. And then I'll dip it again. Okay, when I dip this, I try not to dip the outside of the bottle because if you dip, if your your brush touches the outside of the bottle, you're gonna get ink all over your hands. So again, I'm gonna go back and then press into it. Okay, just follow the points of where you're pointing at. Okay, now I'm gonna make some go further out, make some further in, just so it's not like uh like like so it's kind of random. So I'm gonna make some of this come out. And then I'm going to have some of this go in. And all I'm doing is turning the paper with my left hand, turning the Bristol board. And then I'm just focusing on spacing. Okay. I'm going to move back a little bit so you guys can see. I'm just going to go here. Make some of this a little bit longer. And then come back into it. Come back into it. Like that. And then I'm just going to keep on going. Keep on adding more lines in between. Just take your time. Uh, the secret of this is to press down really hard, really hard at the end so it closes up. Okay, your focus is where the brush begins and just press down wherever it lands. Like, don't even need to focus on that part. Just focus on the distance, the spacing, and that part. And then once you have all that done, just come back with, come back with a, uh, the brush Come back with a brush and kind of like uh, just fill all that in, make all that black. So yeah, I, I, I like going in there and doing all the black areas first. No, doing all the tapering lines first and then coming back with the uh, the black areas later. Okay, I want to make fix this one, make this one a little, little bit nicer. There we go. And then just fill this. So even though I'm using a small, tiny brush, I just hold the brush sideways and I just fill in the ink areas. Okay, another technique that uh, Paolo wants to learn uh, how to do is this texture right here, this fading texture. So this texture, I actually use, uh, a, I don't use a brush, I use a quill. Okay, so I'm gonna sh demonstrate how I do that uh, with a quill. So just, just a regular quill like this, and I'm gonna, Kind of draw in some of those areas again we'll take another look at this it's just black and then it goes into like these lines like i call this a waffling right over here these lines are waffling and then how it fades and then how there's like dots all all the way around it's like a nice gradual line i've seen inkers where they have like a like a blunt line here you can see that they painted this and they just did cross hatching it's not as soft so i'm teaching everyone uh who's watching this video how to make these lines soft okay so I'm just gonna draw in some of the, the black areas. Okay, some of the black areas over here. So X, a lot of times when you're working in comics, X means it's gonna be, be black. And I'm just gonna hatch in a few lines. Because I know what I'm gonna be doing, I don't really need to draw everything in detail for the ink tank, because I'm gonna be inking myself. Okay, so I'll take the quill. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my black magic ink in a bottle, in a dropper, and just feed it, okay? Just feed it just like that, okay? And then once you feed it, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see what I'm gonna do. I'll turn it, and then I'll start pressing down really hard, and then I'll start bouncing that line around. Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing with, with the quill. Go like this, I'm going thick, and then I'm bouncing it around. Take your time. And when I'm bouncing this line around, it's really random. Uh, it can be like further spacing out. Uh, some lines are thicker, some lines are thinner. Very, very random. Okay, I'm just going to go here. Like this. Okay, we're just going to do all of this so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, okay. And then now I can feel, I can, because I've been inking for so long, I can feel that it, this is about the time where I need to feed the quill again. Okay, he's almost, almost out. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the quill. Now, some some artists, they like dr 
dipping the whole quill into the bottle. I, I like feeding it because I feel like there's more control. I know exactly how much ink is going to be there. Uh, sometimes if you did too much and then you're drawing a line, there's going to be a big ink blob that just comes right down. And then you're going to make a whole mess. I find that doing it this way, there's just more, much more control. So I'm going to press down, very lightly come back like this. And just take your time again focus on spacing focus on where you want these lines to end i'm making them random because i want them to have a, like a nice fade okay uh one of the first books that i've worked on that i created this texture was for deadpool what well, deadpool the first regular series not the mini series that joe Madureira did the first uh, series that marvel did of deadpool uh, when i was in over dip Pete Woods. I remember doing this, and at the time, some of the uh, even Pete, the pep, the penciler, he he even asked me, "Well, then how do you do this?" And I said, "It's not that hard. It just it just takes uh, time." And then now I'll turn it around the other direction. I'll feed my feed my quill again with with the dropper. Now I'm going to work on another area. So as I'm working on another area, I'm actually waiting for this to dry because if you cross hatch here, you're going to pull the paper. When I start cross hatching, I want all of this area to be dry because if it's not dry and you're cross hatching on top, I'm going to demonstrate. So you have a wet area and then it's not completely dry and then you ink on top. You're going to pull fibers off of the paper. Okay. So the hair right here. See, sometimes you pull paper. You see some of the papers coming off like this. So when I'm cross hatching an area, area here, it pulls off some of the paper. Okay. So we don't want that to we don't want that to pull the paper. So I'm just gonna go in here, work on this area, let that dry. That that's why I like to I, I like jumping around and letting areas uh, letting certain areas dry. I don't want to like just sit there and wait for it to dry. I'll just work on another area. So go thin and take your time in just spacing these evenly. When you're doing this method, there's a just gonna come a time where you lo you lose track of uh, what areas are thinner and what areas are thicker, and then you're gonna make make them all kind of like like th this is close and this is far apart. So always go back and just kind of double check. So I'm gonna go thick. You can also go the other way where you're starting thin. You can also go thin, whichever you're comfortable with, and then press into it. Like thin, press into it. Okay, but for me it's just it's just speed. Because uh, I'm used to a certain way that's faster. So thick and thin, thick and then thin. And there's no set rules of how many bloops that you make or how many broken lines. It's really random. Because later on, when all this is done, I also do a few more steps to create that look. So I want to do this. I'm just going to go all the way across. See if I can do this a little bit quicker. Yeah, and then if those of you who want to order some of the art supplies I have, look on below the video description. Um, there's a link to my website. My website is waldenwallart.com. And then once you're on my website, there's going to be a big yellow orange button that says Walden on Amazon. Once you click that, it'll lead you to like my Amazon affiliate link where you can order some of the art supplies that I use. Or just even just look at it if you don't want to order. Just, just to see what kind of art supplies I use. Uh, and you can also order some of the, the books that I've worked on for uh, some of the publishers. So I'll feed more. Okay, so the last place that I just inked was the bottom. So I'm going to turn this around because it's dry here. Oh, this is dry. And then I'll start inking outwards again. So I'll start from in here. I'll start small. And then just like this, what I'm doing is I'm starting thin. I'm starting thin, pressing down the bloops and then easing up. Almost like uh, some of the brush ink work I did. But this time I'm using a quill. Okay, so right over here, we're going to go, we're going to go really, really thin. And then thick coming out like that. Okay, just go in here, take your time. And then in areas that are further out, uh, you, you're gonna want it to be a little bit uh, fading. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see uh, what I'm doing with the line work. Take your time. So closer to the black areas, which is the outside, I'll press down harder. And then once it's fading further out, I'll ease up a little bit lighter. I just, just take your time and go a little bit quicker. Bloop it. 
And then once this is this area, which is going to be a lot of blacks, I just press, keep it thicker all the way down. Okay. Uh, again, I'm out of ink. I'm just going to dip my, uh, the dropper into the ink. And then I'm going to turn this around the other direction, turn around this direction, and then go upwards, go upwards. So I'll start thick and I just go up like this. Take your time on this. And again, focus on distance, focus on length, focus on how hard to press at, for coming from the darker area and then focus on easing up. There's a few things that you're focusing on and concentrating on. Okay, anyone can do this. If I can do it, anyone can do this. But it's really remembering the, the areas that you're inking and then focus on it and then don't lose track of it. Okay, inking is also an art form. It's like uh, with drawing. Okay, I'm out of ink. Drawing is just drawing with a pencil going left and right. Inking, you're also focusing on how much pressure. Uh, you're focusing on creating texture with your artwork. Um, because anyone could ink. So there's a difference between inking with a ballpoint pen and then, and then inking with a crow quill or inking with a brush. Uh, every pen, every brush, every tool you use can create the same look here, but some of them just takes a little bit longer. So for example, I'm just going to put this away. I'm going to say, I'm going to use a brush to create that same feel. Okay. So here's a brush. So the brush, the same thing, you're just blooping it. So because it's a little bit uh, softer, it takes a little bit more control. It doesn't have that much of a bounce compared to a uh, crow quill. It bounces less. Because a crow quill is made of a metal uh, tip, aluminum tip, uh, it creates that bounce. With this one, you just have to kind of work at it to make that bounce look. So I'm going to go in all the way. Just kind of, it's almost like stippling, inking a line and stippling. What I'm doing is I'm just going like that. Okay, so now once I have all that done, I'm just going to fill in the blacks on this area. So we're going to grab dip the ink. Here's my bottle of ink. Again, I like using Speedball. And then just fill in all this in black. Okay, and then the other side, same thing. Fill in all the other side in black. This. And then now I'm going to close up some of those those areas. So what I'm going to do is instead of having that, that line, you guys see that line there? I, we don't want that line. We want it to look more natural. I'm going to take a brush or a quill. I'm going to demonstrate with both. Okay? And I'm just going to close up some of those with some, some dots. Okay. If you're using a quill, let me demonstrate how to do that with quill. quill. Okay. I'll take the quill. And then some of the lines that I inked, I just go back in it and I'll thicken it up a little bit. Okay, make sure that uh, my brush is working, my quill is working. Let's go in there and make sure, just fill it in. Now, there's another way that you can do this, which is a little bit faster. And I'll demonstrate uh, uh, after I uh, demonstrate the quill, using the quill. Okay, just make it thicker to make it look natural. Now, here's the other way. Now, I, aside from those pins that you've seen me use, I also use a repeal graph, uh Technical pins like this. So what I'll do, test it, make sure it works. Now I'll take this, you know, I'll stipple. I'll stipple here on the outside just to create a stipple pattern inside. Okay. Now I'm just going to keep doing it all on one side first so you can see the difference between this harsh line here compared to this fade over here. That I'm going to look, I'll squint my eye to make sure there's a nice fade and that there's no harsh hard line. Okay, there's that. And I just take my time and I'll just ink more. There. After I have that side done, uh, there's a lot of ink here. I'm just going to help it dry. Again, I look at the angle and if there's a sheen, that means there's a lot of ink. So I'm just take this, just dry it up a little bit. I'm going to turn this around. This side. Now, again, there's that harsh line. We're going to stipple that away. Okay, so stippling is just doing a lot of the stippling effect. I'm just going to stipple that away. Sometimes I'll just scribble. I'll just do some scribbling closer to the edge until that line gets soft. So just take your time over here. Just do those stipple lines. Like 
this and then also over here so very random there's there's no no um like counting numbers or special skills just very random doing stipple a anyone can stipple it's just a lot of dots and then you're focusing on getting that soft gradual gradation like a gray to a from a black to a gray area to a light area okay so now we have that done okay i'm just gonna make all this black first once you have that done i i'm not completely done yet uh i take it a step further okay i'll take it a step further by using a white gel pen now usually i work on another area and wait for that to dry i'm just going to use my uh, towel I'm just going to press down on it and just help it dry a little bit quicker now when i press down with a towel i try not to like do any of the smudging i just press down and release press down and release okay after that i'll take the gel pen now paulo wants to see how i go about doing this you see on these white dots that's actually done with a white gel pen. Okay. Some of these other outside area, there's also a white gel pen. So right over here, I'm going to zoom in. You see me with a white gel pen. I'll start breaking up the outsides. Okay, let me zoom back out right here. I'll start breaking up the outsides. You can just draw little loopy circles or, or just start stippling. Whatever area, areas that you see like a really harsh white area, I'm just going to stipple this in. Sometimes it's going to look gray, but when you scan this, uh, your, some of the gray areas would either turn black or white. So I'm stippling this. Okay. You, you can even like random scribble. No one's going to know. Okay. Or you, you can just stipple, whichever is easier for you. And then after that's done, I'll go back in here and I'll add a few more dots on the black area just to give it another gradation of the white going into the black. So the same with this side, I'll just add a few whites very randomly. No order, try not to create a pattern. Just go in there and kind of go in and just create some dots to, to break up some of those. So there, there it is. So in the areas that you feel like it's too much and you don't want that much, just get a white out. Like for example, I don't want that area to be that much. I just get a white out and I'll squeeze that and I'll just cover up some of those and go back and then make that fade a little bit softer there so that's that's how i approach making something like this right over here to this okay another question uh, uh my patron uh, paolo uh, from medina italy uh, she also asked how i did uh, another texture this texture over here Okay, so there's two textures. This is when I was inking uh, Jimmy Chung on, uh, I think it was uh, Marvel Four, and, Marvel Two in One, where the here's the thing and here's uh, the Fans Access Four and there's Spider Man, and then she wanted to know how I approach creating uh, this this texture. Where is, where is it? This texture right here. So when I was thinking over Jimmy Chung, um, he's an artist that likes using microns. So I would pick his brain and talk to him, and then all of this was not done with a quill, was not done with a brush. Instead, it was done with microns. I'm going to demonstrate how to do these parts up here first, right? these parts up here. So uh, the first thing I do is I'll zo zoom in so you can see I'm going to do that effect like right over here. Okay, so I'll take the smallest size, which is the 0 0.005, and then I'll crosshatch. I'll do some basketing, very random basketing effect like that you can you can do like this you can do like any effect that you like we're just gonna do maybe maybe all around here okay so i'm gonna make that effect like this i'm gonna continue this effect but with a different uh, texture okay once you have all of that i'm gonna zoom in so you can see a little bit better so this is the point 005 lots of random uh cross this is called basketing basketing okay once you have that done i'm gonna put this pin away i'm gonna grab the next biggest one which is right here 0.01 a little bit larger okay and then i'm gonna continue that basketing halfway halfway so i'm gonna continue that basketing now with this i have a thicker line this is the thicker line and then i'm gonna continue basketing all the way further out 
This method takes a little bit longer, but not as long as if I was just stippling like the whole artwork a little bit faster, but this does take a little bit longer. So I'm cross hatching, basketing, taking my time, making sure that I want to do perpendicular lines and that I'm not doing something like this all the time. I want to do perpendicular lines. Wherever I have a line, I just want to make sure I can do a perpendicular line. Okay, go back to some areas to make sure that it's gradual. Okay, once you have that done, I'm going to put away this pin. Next one I'm going to grab is a little bit thicker, which is the size 2. Okay, you could also use a quill, just press down. But uh, for this effect, I actually use a micron. So I'll start halfway. You know, keep doing that effect. But this time, those basketing lines are a little bit thicker. Okay. And I choose the area that I do. I'm, I'm not randomly basketing those lines. I'm choosing which area to go left to right or which area to go up and down, which areas go in a 90 degree, like that. And then sometimes if there's any areas missing, I just go back up and then kind of do that. Now, after I have that, I'm going to put this O2 away. And then now I'm going to grab the next largest one, O3. Okay, after the O3, I'm just going to start basketing halfway. Now, these lines are a little bit thicker. And then I'm just going to go in there and close up all those uh, white areas as much as I can. Okay, I'll add a little bit more. Very tedious, but the end result looks, looks really nice. Okay, so I can tell that this micron is kind of running out of ink. Those of you who are watching this, and you, if you ever have a micron that runs out of ink, I want you to look at uh, all my videos, uh, and then click uh, the most popular video. If you look at the most popular video, I have one video that has like a lot of views that teaches you how to uh, refill micron. So you don't really have to throw these microns away. I'm switching to uh, like another thicker brush. This one's a 0.5. So once you're out, you can use some of the inks that I've been using to, like the same brand of inks that I've been using to ink, like the Speedball or the Higgins or whatever ink that you have. It doesn't matter uh, what ink, you can actually ref refill these microns. Just remove this tip and just drop some in there. Okay, I'm gonna go in here and add a little bit more. And now, as I'm doing the basketing effect, I'm closing in on those lines. So before, when I was basketing, I was going this far. Now, as I go towards the black area, I go closer, and then I go even closer, like that. Okay, the closer you have it, the more um, blacks that you'll uh, cover, and then you're gonna have less white spaces in between. Now, after I have that done, I'm gonna grab my largest one. The largest tip size is the 0.8 that I have. And just go there and just close everything up. And then I'm just doing a basketing, basketing effect. And then once that's done, we're going to come back and then close all of that with a brush. Fill in the blacks with a brush. So basketing effect over and over again. Any white areas. I'm looking for white areas that are standing out. And I'm just going in there and I'm basketing it. So this again, this takes a little bit of time. But again... After it's done, it'll look nice. Like this, just take your time and just go in there. And then once I have that done, uh, the last thing I'll do is I'll take my brush, my regular wash brush, and then I'll do basketing like thicker lines, thicker lines cutting into it. Okay, go in here just to create a black area, make all this outside black so you can see everything. Come back, basket some of these areas with a brush because your brush can go like a really thicker line than the uh, 0.08. Okay, like that. And then here, I'm just going to use this brush and even go a little bit thicker. Let me do this. And then now I go back with the 08 and just come back and uh, finish it off. And just take your time. Uh, just make that a little bit of softer gradation. Again, cross hatch uh, perpendicular lines to where it is. And then just look for any of the white spaces and then just hatch them in. Basket them in. 
Okay, just go different directions, parallel in a different angle. You don't want it, you don't want it to, I mean, perpendicular. There. And then you kind of like, once you're done, just go back in there and just squiggle up some of the lines like this, random lines, just to make sure it does a gradation there. I'm also going to do here, just, just so it looks pleasing, aesthetically pleasing right here. Right here, just add a little bit here. There, so now you have that soft gradation. That was some of this effect right over here. Now another effect is, how did you manage to do this? This effect looks different than this blast effect right over here. This is smoother, this is more of a rough look. And again, that was done with microns. Let me show you how to do that. So this one you, takes a little bit more work to, to create this effect. So I'm gonna put this away and then we're gonna take a micron. Okay, well I'm just gonna take a number two micron and I'm going to draw those lines. Uh, let's just say I'm going to draw first lines, um, like, like these lines, like these lines, like right over here. I'm just going to draw, indicate where they go first. And I'm just going to draw some lines right over here. Like that, okay. And then once I have those lines, I'll just take the pin, the micron, and then I'm just going to draw those lines going this direction. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. Because this part, actually, you know, I'm gonna ease up the erase the pencils. Otherwise, you guys won't be able to see what I'm doing. But I, I know what I'm gonna be uh, inking. So I'll ink those lines like this, one at a time. Space them evenly, like that. And then I'll, I'll turn with my left hand the Bristol board. And then I'll try to make it look like it's pointing the same direction. And I'll just keep turning and I'll just draw those straight lines. And then I'll continue turning. Okay, you guys get the gist? So once I have that done, I'm gonna go back and then I'm gonna close up those lines, which takes a little bit longer. So I'm gonna go right here. I'll start in the middle and I'll close up that line. So I'm going to go here and close up that line. Go here, close up that line. This part takes a little bit longer. Unlike using a brush or a quill, a micron is not a flexible tip. And you're just going to have to go in there and then just kind of like create that tapered triangle look. Go in there and fill it out. I'm just going to get a, a, a thicker tip. At first I was using a size 2. I'm just going to move over to the size 3 here and then i'm just going to continue closing them up okay the closer you have them the easier it is to close up okay the distance the spacing in between each one so i'm going here i'll start off here my crown i'll just slowly close it up one at a time it's almost like drawing these little triangles and you're just fill, filling it in Okay, you can also go this direction, whichever you're comfortable with. You can go from this direction and just kind of build it up there. Like this, and then kind of fill it in. Build it up. And make these ones over here a little bit longer. You build this up. Take your time, build it up. Okay, gonna do that again. Build it up over here. Build it up here. Just draw that line. Like this, one at a time. Make sure you start at the left side or the right side doesn't matter which side you start as long as you establish some pattern okay with these lines you want a pattern with lines like this you don't want a pattern you want more of a random more of a natural look but with these lines you want a pattern to create that uh, look go in here close them up fill it in close them up fill it in close it up fill it in close it up and then fill it in we're just going to continue doing this all the way Close it up, fill it in. Okay, once you have that done, uh, actually, what's what when I have that done, um, I'll grab the brush, and then I'll finish off the outside, all the black areas, so I, I can tell that my brush is out of ink. So I'm gonna dip my brush, get some ink, and then right in between, just gonna go and just close it up, okay? Uh, I'm not inking the outside of those lines that I just drew. I just go in there and I go a little bit further out 
and I'm just pushing into it. Just like how I demonstrate I'm pushing these, but for this one, I'm just pushing into it. Uh, some areas that's a little bit off, I just go back and then make it more of a sharper tip and then want to continue doing that uh, right here. Uh, you're probably asking, why don't you just use a brush and just go ahead and just do that? Because if I use a brush and did all of this directly like that, I'm just going to get this, I just move lines. But for that effect, it's a more rougher line like this. So when we look at these pencils, uh, these inks, these lines are more of a, a rougher, rougher look. Okay, it's different textures. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here and then close up the inside of it, but keep those outside rougher look. So that's how I go about uh, inking that effect right here. Next, uh, another technique uh, that Paolo wants to learn how to do is these lines. How, this is a, a daredevil piece that I ate uh, over Philip Tan, uh, and some of the background was, there's this effect over here. We're gonna start, do, we're gonna do this, right? Do this first, and then we'll do this effect later. This, this like fog, this mist effect. So actually we can kind of do both. So when we look at this effect right here, it's more of a, uh, like, kind of like a pattern that goes on, okay? And after I do the pattern with a brush, I did like a cross hatch. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate how I do that. Okay, without having to draw it, I'm just going to go here and start uh, inking it. So right over here, I'll just draw in those lines like this. These ra random patterns. Okay, some thicker, some thinner like this. Okay, so say there's a block there and I just bloop the line, just like how I made bloopy lines uh, right over here, but I'm using a brush creating some kind of a pattern like this. And what I'm doing is I'm essentially going random patterns like that. So if you can see those patterns is really random. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here, just create those boopy lines going the same direction. I'm having them flow. I'm just making sure that they don't crisscross. When I say crisscross, that means I don't want those lines to kind of crisscross. I want them to kind of flow the same direction. Some are thicker and some are nice, uh, thinner, like that. Okay, once you have that effect done, then you can either use a quill or use a micron and then come back. Uh, I'm going to show you what I've done over here, like this. I would just uh, hatch in those lines. So, right over here, I'll, I'll have that line. Once that effect is done, then I'll use a Micron uh, or a quill or a brush, whichever you like. I'll, I'll demonstrate with all of them. Uh, just go in here and kind of like hatch in those lines, space them evenly. Right over here, we take a closer look, space them evenly, like this. Okay, that's with uh, a micron. Yeah, you can also use a quill. I'm gonna grab the quill. Here is my quill. Uh, just hold the quill really lightly and then draw those lines as light as you can. Don't press down, okay? You're just holding the quill and you're getting a thin line. So I'm testing to make sure it works. And then I'll use a quill. Here's another tip. Instead of holding the quill like this, I'll hold it sideways a little bit to get that thin line. So I just go very thin and I concentrate on spacing it. There's that, like this, okay? And then I'm gonna demonstrate how to do that with a brush, okay, with a brush. You're just holding the brush very lightly until only the tip of the brush is gliding across. Okay, you test it first. And then right here, you ink those lines very lightly. Okay, space them apart evenly and ink those lines very lightly. And that's how I create that pattern. Okay, right over here. You, we can always go back. Uh, there's this loop there right over here uh, on the uh, reference photo. Like this, let me see, this area is like another area that just kind of loops around. That's just um, inking around it. Like you're just inking this, you're just inking uh, this pattern around it like this and then creating a shadow on that part. And then doing some of those lines. Or you can do what I, what I like to do is um, I'll just go in there and then I'll ink in those lines uh, with a heavier black like this. I make them bloopy. Okay, say, say I created that, that black area. 
Is that okay? And then I can just use the uh, the white gel pen, the uh, our friend, the white gel pen, and then ink the white lines around it like this. Okay, so that's that's another way that you can do the work. Okay, you can ink it in black first, and then come back and then do the uh, the white lines on top of it. Now, the other question is, how do we create this fog effect? Uh, Paolo wants to know how I created this fog effect over here. So this fog effect is the same the same way I just did this pattern, like on the bottom. Okay, I'll just do do that here. So this fog effect, I actually use something called the pro white. This is the pro white right over here. And then what this is is almost like a watercolor. It's just like a, a white brick. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna use a brush. And then you're gonna dip a brush in into water. Okay, dip the brush into water. Okay, make it wet first. Okay, and then once you have that, you're gonna place the brush in here to activate it, just like watercolors. Okay, just activate, activate, and make sure those brushes. I mean, the paint is working. If not, then just go in there and let me put this away first. You can go in there and grab more water. Okay, I'm gonna grab more water. Here's my water. Let me fix this. Okay, so grab more water. Okay, once you have the water, activate some more of that white, pro white. Okay, test it first. Okay, test first. If you use uh, less water and activate it really strong, you're gonna get a nice white that covers everything up. I'm gonna grab a little bit more water because I want this to be a little bit thicker. Okay, activate it. And you can use this over and over again. Okay, um, once you cover the bottle, um, leave it off, leave the cap off when you use too much water. And then once it's dry, just cover it up. I had this bottle for a long time. Okay, so Pro White. Okay, again, look under my video description. If you want to buy the same art supplies, look under my video description, uh, over my website, and look for the Amazon button. So that white, test it first. Okay, and then right over here, we're just gonna ink that that white glow here. If it's a little bit too white, remove some of that, and then kind of pull some of that to the side like this. So some of that uh, that fog effect, I'm gonna create that fog effect like this. Create some fog effect like this. Go back over, get some more paint if you need, and just paint that. Paint that white effect over. If you don't want it to be too 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 light, just clear your brush, clean your brush a little bit. Use less white. Use less white. Just dip a little bit of it, and then go in here and create that that lighter effect, almost like a smoky effect. Add some more. Create that smoky effect. So I'm gonna create a smoky effect all above here, so you can see how that looks like like a smoky effect on top of the background, which which looks kind of nice. I'm going a little bit closer. The pro white again. Test how much is into in, in your brush, and then slowly just paint that in. Okay, get some more. And just paint that in. There, and it kind of create a smoke pattern. You can, you can always stipple it. You can do all sorts of all so all sorts of things with this. There, like that. And that's how I go about uh, creating like a a, like a light smoke. Now, here's the thing. When you scan this, you just need to scan it in color and save it as grayscale. Try not to, when you're sending, when you do something like this for a publisher, you don't want to save it as a bitmap. Uh, if you save it as, as a bitmap, you're not going to get this nice gradation of the, the smoke coming out. Uh, you do want to save it as a grayscale. And it retains all of that. So some more smoke coming out. You can even do some extra white lines following here if you wanted to a little bit more just just use more white paint and just go back on top and there you go that's how i do all these let me see if there's uh any other requests from paolo uh from Medina, italy i'm honored that she's all the way from italy and she's asking me to do this yeah so i guess so ink ink those lines uh just like how i demonstrated in areas like this like on, on your artwork uh if you do need to do some effects and that's how i approach doing some of these effects let's go back uh into the uh, video rewind a little bit pause and play and just to see how i approach this i'm going to pull this closer so you can do a screen capture if you want okay you can see it 
We'll just come back and view it and then I'm gonna hold this closer. Uh, here's the first lines. Here is this. And here is this. So thank you for watching my video. Um, I hope you learn, I hope everyone here uh, learned something from it. Uh, again, this is from Paolo. Uh, she's one of my patrons from Italy. Um, she asked me these questions and then um, I'm demonstrating on how I approach uh, doing the work uh, over here. And um, if you're interested in being one of my patrons, check my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash art. Uh, there's different tiers. Uh, so if you want mentorship tiers or, or something like this, you don't have to become regardless. Uh, just uh, someone who wants to learn how to ink, that's okay too. Um, you can learn more about my, my special, the different tiers I have on Patreon. Uh, yeah, to learn more about me, my name is Wong Wong. I'm a comic book artist. Uh, I mentioned that earlier in the video. Uh, you can check out my website. It's Wong Wong art.com and over there there's a lot of different things that you can look at so thanks again for watching please smash that like button hit uh, subscribe hit the notification bell so anytime i upload a video you'll be one of the first to see it and share with your friends the more you hit like the more you share the more people will see this video and uh people will just you know um, they'll enjoy the video and uh, hit up on their um feed more so thanks you, thank you again. Until next time, have a good uh, day. Uh, keep on drawing and keep on practicing. Take care.